Coming up, the Bruins are unbeatable at home and the Caps and Preds win in overtime. This is Locked On Game to Game NHL. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game NHL local experts bringing you the biggest stories on the ice. I am your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. We're ready to recap the action for you from yesterday. We start out with the Boston Bruins, who still have not lost in regulation at home all season long. They continued that streak with an easy 7-3 win over the Panthers on Monday. Locked On Bruins and Panthers recap what happened in Boston. Sometimes you're good. Sometimes you're lucky, and the Boston Bruins were a bit of both in a 7-3 win over the Florida Panthers here on Monday. This is Ian McLaren, host of Locked On Boston Bruins, and in a game where the Bruins were outplayed early on and outshot overall, they had the offense to get the job done. Uh, Linus Allmark standing tall in net for the Bruins, while Spencer Knight at the other end was a bit leaky for the Panthers. The Bruins improved to 17-0-2 on home ice this season, 25-4-2 overall, as they defeat the defending President's Trophy champions. It was a four-point night for the Aegis captain, Patrice Bergeron, one game after he was honored for recording his 1,000th point. Follow Locked on Boston Bruins for all the latest on the black and gold. It was the story of two different goaltending performances between the Florida Panthers and the Boston Bruins. What is up, guys? It's Armando Velez from the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And the Florida Panthers lose to the Boston Bruins by a final score of 7-3 to at the TD Garden. And the story, once again, was goaltending. The Spencer Knight started in his first game in over two weeks after dealing with a non-COVID illness. And... The amount of perimeter shots that Spencer Knight let in with no traffic and amount of shots of juice off juicy rebounds was just a lot for too much for the Panthers to come back from. And even though the Florida Panthers used a five minute and 20 second stretch where they scored three unanswered and got it down to a one goal deficit. The Panthers didn't have answers after that, and the Boston Bruins went on on a run as well, scoring three unanswered themselves. So just too much of a hole for the Florida Panthers to climb after being down 4 nothing, and it was really mostly on the goaltending. They get decent amount of goaltending in this one, and the Panthers, maybe they come out with at least a point in this one because they generated so many opportunities, getting 38 shots on goal, pressuring Linus Allmark, who Linus Allmark is likely the favorite to win the Vesna Trophy in the NHL this this season. So we we saw we saw it firsthand on on a night like tonight. So to listen to my recap of this seven to three loss against the Boston Bruins, make sure to listen to my latest episode of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your team every day. The Washington Capitals scored four goals in beating the Red Wings in overtime, but Alex Ovechkin is going to have to wait a little bit longer to match Gordie Howe's 801 career goals as he didn't score yesterday. Locked on Red Wings and Capitals recap the Washington win. Capitals take down the Detroit Red Wings in overtime. Hi, this is Dan Holney of Locked On Capitals. Well, this was a back and forth game that had everything. It had everything except for Alex Ovechkin's 801st goal. The Capitals got scoring from Nick Dowd, who got two goals just seconds apart. And then Eric Gustafson, who didn't have a goal the entire season, got a hat trick in the last game and got a goal again tonight. So the blue line was kicking in. And then in overtime, again, more blue line production as Dmitry Orloff gets the game winner in overtime and the Caps pick up the big W. The Caps hope to stay in the win column as they take on the Ottawa Senators next. Keep it locked to Locked On Capitals, and I will keep you updated on all the news with your Washington Capitals. Locked On Capitals, your team every day. The Detroit Red Wings somehow steal a point. Well, not somehow. Thanks to Billy Huso, they steal a point against the Washington Capitals, falling 4-3 to three in overtime and deny Alex Ovechkin his 801st goal to tie Gordie Howe. Scotty, what happened in this hockey game? 
a lot, a lot of Billy Huso, baby. That's pretty much what happened in this game. Uh, the the way that the Wings were able to stay in it was they got off to a really hot start. They looked pretty solid early on, like really early on, and then that kind of faded pretty quickly. But, uh, I mean, looked solid on the rush. I didn't think the special teams looked that bad. But really, I mean, at the end of the day, this was just Billy Huso willing and dragging this team to a point. Yeah, absolutely. And Scotty, you and I are going to talk about the sixth straight loss of the Detroit Red Wings on Tuesday's episode of Lockdown Red Wings. The Predators won in overtime against the Oilers, ending their six-game losing streak and eight-game skid against Edmonton. Locked on Oilers and Predators go over that final. The Oilers come back three times against the Nashville Predators, but fail to put them away in overtime. Hi, my name is Brett Holden from Locked On Oilers, and despite Leon Dreisaitl's and Connor McDavid's utter dominance against the Nashville Predators so far this year, it was Nashville who takes the win in overtime overtime. Leon Dreisaitl is held pointless in this one against Nashville as Connor McDavid only gets two assists against the Preds on Monday night as it is Ryan Nugent Hopkins and yes, Puliarvi providing the goal scoring for the Oilers against the Preds. Two goals for Ryan Nugent Hopkins and yes, Puliarvi's first goal in 26 games. Jack Campbell gave the Oilers as much of a chance to win as he could as he stopped 31 of the 35 shots against him but the Oilers dropped their third straight including one against the lowly Anaheim Ducks the Oilers record goes to 17 14 and 2 and they look to improve on the record as they head to Dallas on Wednesday evening for a 7 30 puck drop mountain time the Nashville Predators faced a familiar foe tonight at Bridgestone Arena as they welcomed the Edmonton Oilers to town, but the Predators earned themselves a better outcome than last time. Hi everyone, I'm Ann Kimmel from Locked on Predators. The Predators took on the Edmonton Oilers for the second time in just six days, and they got a much needed and well-earned win tonight at home. Tonight, the Predators were able to generate more offense. They actually outshot the Oilers. The Preds also scored a power play goal, which is something that they have been struggling to do in the month of December. This game was won in overtime by Alexander Carrier, who returned to the lineup for the first time tonight since missing four games due to injury. The Predators line of Nino Niederreiter, Cody Glass, and Tanner Janot did an impressive job containing Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and that top line. They held McDavid to just two points on the game, and Dreisaitl had no points on the score sheet, which was pretty impressive because those two combined for nine points just last week. This was hands down one of Nashville's best, most complete games all season long. The Preds are going to hope to carry this momentum into their Wednesday game against the Chicago Blackhawks. Coming up, the Stars and Avalanche win defensive battles. This is Locked On Game to Game NHL. Today's edition of Locked On Game to Game is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's the super simple way for you to play daily fantasy sports. What you do is you pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You are not competing against anybody else. You are just competing against those projections. So that's what makes it super simple. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can get a 100% instant deposit match of up to 100%. If you use the promo code locked on, if you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. So don't forget to enter promo code locked on to sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game NHL. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. After no goals in regulation or overtime, only the Avalanche's Evan Rodriguez's shootout goal found the back of the net all night in Colorado. Locked On Avalanche and Islanders review the win over New York. All right, so the Colorado Avalanche throw 3,000 shots on net against Ilya Sorokin and the New York Islanders. And the only one that gets in is an Evan Rodriguez shootout goal. That's the only one between both teams that go in and the abs win this thing one to nothing in a shootout. Great matchup between both goaltenders. 
And who says zero zero games can't be entertaining? Because this thing definitely was. Yeah, that's exactly what this was. It was the most exciting zero zero game you could get, and the Avalanche gave Avalanche fans the gift of extra hockey mm. and peppering both goalies. We stood up to the test. Yeah. So the Avalanche with one more home game in this five game home stre- home game stretch. They've won three out of four so far. One more, and then they go on the road. But uh, right now, you got to be you get Curtis McDermott back. He made a difference, but you had another injury. <laughs> we, so we're going to be talking about that. Tune into Locked On Avalanche to get everything with this game between the Avalanche and the Islanders. It was exciting. The New York Islanders steal a point from the Colorado Avalanche. Hi, I'm Gil Martin of Locked On Islanders. Islanders fall in a shootout to the Avs, one to nothing. A one-sided game. The Islanders outskated, outshot, and more or less outplayed. But why did they come away with a point? Two words, Ilya Sorokin. With Semyon Varlamov out with an injury and Corey Schneider, the only other available goalie, all the pressure was on Ilya Sorokin to come through for the Islanders. And he did just that, making 44 saves in regulation and overtime to force the shootout, getting a shutout, but losing the game. But overall, the Islanders played a faster, more skilled team and managed to come away with a point on the road. That's not a bad performance, but now they have to do better going forward as they come back to the East Coast. For more, listen to or watch the Locked On Islanders podcast with me, Gil Martin, on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. The Stars took care of the Blue Jackets on Monday with Dallas coming up just 15 seconds short of a shutout win. Locked On Stars and Blue Jackets look at why Dallas had Columbus's number. The Dallas Stars close out their five-game road trip with a 2-1 to one win over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Hey, everybody. Dane Lewis with the Locked on Stars podcast. And the Stars are finally coming back to Texas. They're doing so after their most recent outing, which saw them win a low-scoring affair against the lowly Blue Jackets. And while you would have loved to have seen the Stars dominate a team like Columbus, you also do have to factor in that they'd played their last four games on the road. And this has been one of the most difficult stretches of the season in terms of quality of opponent. The four teams that they'd faced previously on this trip are teams that are gunning for playoff positions. And many, if not all four of those teams, will likely be in this year's Stanley Cup playoffs. And so it's big that the Stars were able to get two points out of that, out of this one. That was... The a goal ultimately coming into this one. Nice to see Wyatt Johnston get his eighth goal of the season. A good game from several members of the team, including Ryan Suter, who picks up an assist and made a few good defensive plays as well. And then, of course, we see Jason Robertson get his 24th of the season snapping a seven-game streak without a goal for Jason Robertson. So maybe this will somehow get him back on track. And Jake Ottinger, a fantastic performance, saving 27 of 28 shots, was about 15 seconds away from recording his third shutout of the season. But a shot from Kent Johnson, uh, the rookie for the Blue Jackets, going past him near the end of the game, an empty net goal. But all in all, you love to see the Stars heading back to Dallas with a win and seven out of 10 points possible on this road trip. And if you really think about it, they put themselves in a position to go 10 out of 10 on points on this trip. But of course, just not meant to be in Pittsburgh a week ago from tonight. And then, of course, they go to overtime and lose against the Hurricanes on Saturday. But all in all, a very successful trip for the Stars. And now they come home and their next challenge will be on Wednesday against the Edmonton Oilers and scorching red hot Connor McDavid but we're going to recap this game in its entirety on Tuesday's episode of Locked on Stars you can find us on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast absolutely free stop me if you heard this one before the Blue Jackets fail to score a goal the Blue Jackets lose a game the Blue Jackets season gets Worse and worse and worse. Jay Foster, Locked On Blue Jackets here. Jackets, Blue Jackets lose to the Dallas Stars, 2-0. Uh, they lose another player to injury during the game after losing two players hours before the game. Um, just story of the season. Um, the Blue Jackets didn't play a bad game, I thought. They just couldn't... They did everything right except score. Um, the... Stars made it one nothing, and then that was the the score of the game for most of the ta- for most of the game. Jason Robertson adds a empty netter at the end, which you know doesn't really count as a goal, but whatever. And the Blue Jackets uh, have lost their fourth in a row. Um, we're going to talk about all of that 
on tomorrow's Locks and Blue Jackets. We're going to talk goaltending. We're going to talk ice time. We're going to talk who is going to be the next man up if Igor Chinikov cannot go. Uh, all this and more on Locks and Blue Jackets. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. Also on YouTube. Until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game NHL. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. Make sure you are subscribed to Locked On NHL and, of course, your favorite team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Kenani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.